We are learning new developments out of Massachusetts in the Karen Reed case. The Boston Globe is reporting that the district attorney is saying he is mystified by the FBI's involvement, saying they don't have jurisdiction over a state murder trial. Reed, as you may know, is the woman accused of killing her cop boyfriend and then allegedly leaving him in the snow to die. But her defense claims that law enforcement officials are protecting the real killers prompting an interest in the case by the FBI. Before we break this all down with my guest Marie Pereira, let's take a look at the case against Karen Reed. John O'Keefe was a good cop uh, and he was a good man. Uh, that's why my client uh, was with him. Karen Reed is accused of causing the death of her boyfriend, Boston police officer John O'Keefe, after a night of heavy drinking. Prosecutors claim Reed backed her car into O'Keefe during a snowstorm and left him to die. But Reed's defense says the Commonwealth has it all wrong. With each new piece of evidence that comes in, we're more and more convinced uh, of my client's innocence. O'Keefe's snow-covered body was found outside the home of another officer in Canton, Massachusetts. According to the prosecution's statement of the case, the couple was invited to the house after the bars in downtown Canton closed. Witnesses told investigators they last saw the couple at the Waterfall Bar and Grill. Others said they saw a black SUV resembling Reed's parked outside the house, but never saw O'Keefe come inside. Reed told investigators that she dropped him off at the after party and never heard from him again. She went home to take care of the kids and then she called him 49 times. Where are you? Why aren't you back? She was the one to go back to that uh, residence to look for him. She was the one to find him. She was the one to uh, try and keep him warm and give him CPR and try and revive him. But Norfolk County prosecutors question those actions. They claim voicemails and text messages detail strains in the relationship and the victim's desire to end their relationship, including a voicemail from the night he died in which Reed allegedly told O'Keefe that she hated him. Also, O'Keefe's niece and nephew who lived with him allegedly told police that the couple fought constantly about the relationship and breaking up before his death. Prosecutors point to a broken taillight on Reed's SUV, pieces of which were allegedly found near O'Keefe's body to suggest she ran her car into him. A forensic pathologist opined that significant blunt force trauma injuries occurred prior to Mr. O'Keefe becoming hypothermic. Cuts and bruises were found on O'Keefe's head and arm. Somebody being hit by a car, I would submit, does not look like they had been punched out by Mike Tyson. Um, and the victim here looked like he had been punched out by Mike Tyson. Reed's lawyer, David Yonetti, says his client is not responsible for O'Keefe's injuries. I believe that the, the evidence shows that she didn't hit him. Um, I've said in the past that his injuries are not consistent with being hit by a vehicle. And by the way, the Lexus taillight breaking, coming in contact with a human being and not a hard surface, makes no sense to me. I think it's going to make no sense to a jury. If not Reed, who? Her lawyer says that there's a lot they still don't know. This is a case where uh, the, the, the homeowner, being a Boston police officer, was treated differently than he would have been if he were you or me. A lot to talk about. Thankfully, Marie Pereira is still with me. All right, first of all, the public attention on this case, because it seems like you have two sides adamant. Number one, that Karen Reed killed her boyfriend, no question about it. And number two, no, not she didn't. It's a cover-up, and a lot of the cops at the party did it. What are your thoughts? I think her attorneys are doing an excellent job at defending her even before the trial begins because there's certainly public support and on top of it they really do have evidence that would prove 
that she didn't do it. All I could remember is a photograph of the victim's arm mm -hmm. with what looks like claw marks, mm -hmm. like dog, From the dog right. And then all of a sudden the dog is not available. Everything else I'm saying maybe, but then when I think about that photograph, mm -hmm. how would he get that? Yeah. Not from a motor vehicle striking him. So I think they're doing a great job. I do too, and the 49 phone calls. I think that's significant because I think if the person who did it called, it wouldn't be 49 times. To me, that's desperation. Where is he? 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 What happened? What happened? What happened? And so I think that works in her favor too, potentially. Now, the other part of this is, you know, the district attorney did state that he has offered to speak with the FBI, to speak with the U.S. attorney about this case case because of the inquiry that they're doing and according to him they have not taken him up on that offer talk to us a little bit about inside baseball when it comes to law enforcement and different parties and political parties and all, what do you think of this maybe they have talked maybe they haven't well, the state police wants to show, listen, we know what we're doing. We don't need you butting into our affairs, especially the FBI or any other source of jurisdiction. This was our police officer, our citizen in our state. So what makes you think that we're a bunch of Barney Fipes and we need you coming in? So there's always a testosterone thing going on. But I would ask them to be careful because if all of these accusations are being made and other people want to help you, why don't you accept the help and be extremely transparent with defense give them whatever they want if you have nothing to hide then give them what they want to dispel the rumors and put them to rest before this thing goes to trial because it's going to follow you with the jurors who are going to be from that venue watch out watch out and optics are everything i agree yes. with you the defense is doing a good job raising all of these issues there are a lot of supporters for karen reed that have been very vocal very public but i think at the end of the day no matter what, I don't think I would expect any district's, district attorney's office to say, you're right, we're wrong, we're dismissing the charges. Do you think that's a possibility or do you expect this is going to go forward against Karen Reed? I think at this point, they're not going to be dismissing in the interest of justice. They're going to go forward and then they are going to have to prove their case beyond a reasonable doubt, especially because it was a law enforcement officer. Mm -hmm. They're not just going to say, we'll call it a day. They're not going to do that because it would be saying we were wrong from the beginning. Yeah, I agree with you. And I want to share now before we go today's thought from the bench. My opinion as a former judge, and I must share this with you, is listen, generally the FBI does not just step in when they don't have jurisdiction. And in fact, they do have jurisdiction for some special investigations, which can include, as I understand it, if... There's a felony against, felony murder rather, against a law enforcement officer of a state. And so maybe that's the grounds under which they're stepping in. But you better be careful. And I agree from the bench. Give them everything. Cooperate fully. There's nothing to lose at the end of the day. It's justice that all should be seeking. All right, coming up next, we look ahead.